Hi everyone, I'm Natalie. You've met me before in class several times throughout these past 15 months. So today I'm going to be going over the course objectives that I have met um, for leadership um, in this clinical reflection presentation. And I'm gonna be discussing the eight course objectives and how I met them um, by going to certain clinical experiences um, and we'll be elaborating from there on. So the first clinical objective that I met was to utilize previous knowledges of the sciences, liberal arts, information technologies, and nursing to develop skills as a leader. And I did this um, a lot of ways last semester. The first one being um, I signed up for peer leadership experiences. Um, the first ones that I signed up for were uh, the skills workshops in the HBB building, where I helped um, other students in other classes develop their skills for videotaping. Um, I helped th the 309 students um, practice their skills of range of motion, um, transferring from the bed to the bedpan, wheelchair, etc. cetera. Um, and I also worked with 331 students at the hospital um, and I was available to them to answer any questions they may have, um, help them with med administration um, and skills such as bandaging and transferring patients from the commode or to the toilet or to the walker, et cetera. Um, these are great experiences because I was able to use the knowledge I had accumulated over the last several months to help my peers. And it was, it was a nice thing to see. And I also actually was able to help a friend of mine from years past who was in the 309 class. So that was really nice for me to see her and to help her on her journey. Um, another way I met this was I volunteered at the Mayfair um, where I gave out basic information uh, regarding type 1 diabetes to children and their parents. Um, I was able to utilize knowledge from classes such as 421 and 430 to help give out basic information to newly diagnosed and previously diagnosed children. Um, the second objective that I met was to ab apply basic principles of management to meet the challenge of an ever-changing healthcare system. And the way I did this was by shadowing the nurse supervisor at Cedarcrest. Um, I got to see how involved they were throughout the entire hospital. And as we were told, there is a lot of walking and a lot of stairs involved, so it's not for the faint of heart. And these nurses are involved in pretty much every aspect of the hospital, which is very neat. Um, they're there to help, you know, solve conflicts between nurses, conflicts between patients, and even help if there's a code or something like that going on. So it was very cool. Um, and it really shows their leadership ability because they are involved in so many aspects and they can just step right in and take charge. Um, so that was neat. And it's a very complex job and it requires them to be on their toes and to be um, problem solvers. The third objective that I have met throughout clinical is to demonstrate leadership skills through effective use of communication by representing the self, college, and nursing in a, in a professional manner. So I felt, this, I felt that I did this by communicating um, with the nurse leaders in a professional way via email or phone, um, mostly email. Um, I generally contact, like I said, generally contacted people by email where I introduced myself professionally um, and told them that I was a senior nursing student uh, at Cedarcrest and what goals I was looking to achieve through that experience. Um, this was helpful because it let me, you know, practice how to properly write and correspond um, through emails and through the phone because not many people, you know, think about how to properly address people. And now in the day and age of texting, people have kind of forgotten how to properly address and how to properly sign off on an email. So I think that was really important. Um, I also followed up um, several of the visits with the nurse leaders with thank you notes to let them know that I enjoyed the experience and to thank them for their time and let them know, you know, if I learned anything from them, which most of the time I did. So that was nice. Um, the fourth objective that I met uh, is to critically evaluate and disseminate current research related to the principles of leadership and the effect on the healthcare system. So I did this, um, we found two research articles um, that we shared um, in a meeting with, I was with Dean Robb, um, 
And so I shared an article about the nurse's perception of managers' leadership styles and its associated outcomes. So the purpose of this article was to examine, you know, different leadership styles and how they're perceived by the staff. Um, and there was a positive correlation between transactional and transformational leadership styles and a negative correlation with laissez-faire styles, which is what we were taught in class. Um, so it was kind of nice to see that reiterated in a research paper. Um, the findings support evidence that a combination of leadership styles support positive outcomes for staff. And according to Sullivan, the, the textbook for our course this semester, transformational leaders work with teams to create a vision and inspire others. They're often motivating and lead people to achieve remarkable results. They are looked up to. Whereas transactional leadership is a style that relies on and uh, relies on rewards and punishments to achieve an outcome. So it's in, the overall arching theme is that it's important to be a positive leader because nobody likes working for someone that gives no guidance or is dictator-like. It just creates a negative environment for the staff and then ultimately for the patient. Um, and, and it's especially important now because nurses are more stressed out than ever thanks to COVID and the thereafter nursing shortage. Um, so we need to make sure that we are training ourselves to be transformational leaders so that we can prevent, you know, this, pro uh, this problem from still happening in the future. Okay, so the fifth objective is to function as a competent patient advocate, nurse advocate, and change agent. So I was able to meet this objective um, several ways, again, by one, attending the State Board of Nursing meetings. We went to two of those meetings, um, as well as visiting the prison um, SCI Phoenix, which is in Collegeville. Um, so the State Board of Nursing meetings, <clears throat> you know, kind of let us see how the governing body of nursing in Pennsylvania works. Um, and it kind of also lets us see how they, <clears throat> you know, advocate for the rights of the nurse. And, you know, they are, they do it, um, discuss punishments for nurses that have violated the code um, of ethics. But at the same time, I do feel that the overall theme of those um, meetings where people are in trouble is to kind of give them help and make sure that if if it is possible to get them on the road again to being a good nurse again. So I thought that was nice. Um, they also enact rules and regulations that can help protect uh, nurses in practice. So if, you know, if there's something going on, um, they're just making sure that we are protected and that our rights are protected. Um, and then another experience where I was a patient advocate um, was at the prison because I witnessed a lot of unfair treatment from the nurses, particularly one nurse. Um, and when we went there, the nurse supervisor did say, oh, a lot of people think that the pa or the prisoners don't get treatment and they definitely do here. I mean, she wasn't wrong about that. They did get a lot of treatment. They weren't withheld from treatment. I just feel like they weren't treated as human beings the nurse in question kind of treated them and told me and the other student that was with me that they were babies. I also witnessed her kind of draw up insulin willy nilly and kind of stab them in the arm. So that to me made me want to be an advocate for these people because although they're criminals and they have done stuff wrong in their lives, they don't deserve to be treated that way. And I think that no matter what, they're a human and deserve to be treated with respect. So I made it my goal while I was there just to show compassion to these people because they're not getting at that a lot. They're not with their families. They can only call them on the phone if they're lucky, if they even have that. So it just made, it meant a lot to me to be able to <clears throat> provide that some sort of comfort for them. Okay, so the sixth objective um, is to formulate plans for continual personal leadership growth and development as an independent practitioner of nursing and contributing member of society. 
So I met this objective by um, attending the continuing education uh, presentations. So thanks to COVID, now everything's online. Previously, in my experience in the past, we had to go in person to attend um, lectures just to get credit. So I attended um, one lecture on inpatient diabetes management. It was um, put on by Lehigh Valley Health Network. So that was nice because it was utilizing protocols that we are already used to. Um, so they went over their typical diabetes hospital protocols and um, a lot of talking about carb coverage, which is incredibly important. Um, and also very confusing for new nursing students because it just doesn't make sense when you're first looking at it. Um, and they also had interactive quizzes um, throughout the lecture to help test your knowledge, which was kind of nice because, you know, they kind of talk on and on. You, it, you can have a tendency to get lost while they're talking. So these quizzes throughout kind of help check and make sure that you're paying attention and that you actually are understanding what they're saying. Um, I also did um, two online lectures from the National Institutes of Health about probiotics um, and the herb drug interactions. So those were cool because for one, for me, I think a lot of people think probiotics are really beneficial, which they are, but there's just not a lot of public knowledge, appropriate public knowledge. So I thought it was cool because it really broke down the science and how much of the probiotic that you're actually taking and how much it actually makes it to the target zone. So that was cool. As well as the herb drug interactions. Again, people don't really realize, you know, the effects that harmless herbs can have on the medications that you're taking. So those were cool. Um, and I enjoyed attending these because with my previous job, I did go to continuing education and I always loved going to that because it was a great way for me to stay up to date on new information, um, you know, and also see friends and get cool swag in the, in the uh, expo hall. So that's fun. Um, Objective seven is recognize the role of the nurse in policy making related to healthcare services at local, state, national, and global levels. So this um, objective was accomplished by meeting with Representative Kozarowski and Representative Schlossberg. Um, they were both amazing, enthusiastic people and the type of people I would definitely want in office. Um, and Representative Kozarowski, um, as I'm sure you're aware, is a former nurse. So it was really cool to see her because she was really advocating for us and just for healthcare, um, you know, in the governing body of Pennsylvania, which we definitely need. Um, and she helped pass a lot of bills that were helpful to protecting the rights of nurses. And she's also passionate about education and um, mo moms and children, which is like the mainstay almost of our profession. Um, and Colleen Smith on the AmericanNurse.com website says that nurses are uniquely positioned to improve the healthcare system. If properly supported, we can drive high reliability and lead to foundational changes that is felt far beyond the bedside. So I really believe that um, Representative Kozarowski and Representative Schlossberg are really doing that and trying to make positive changes in our government, which is really hard, especially nowadays. And then the last uh, objective that I met is to predict, predict and describe political, ethical dilemmas within clinical, organizational, and professional nursing practice. So the provision one of the ANA Code of Ethics states that nurses practice with compassion and respect for the inherent dignity, worth, and unique attributes of every person. So again, my experience with the prison highlights this portion of the Code of Ethics. So while I was there, there was a particular nurse that did not treat the inmates fairly and she treated them less than. I felt that she lacked compassion and did not respect their worth and dignity. Um, but there was one man um, that I'll stick in my mind for a while who had a painful wound on his face and she was insistent on probing it despite the pain that it caused him. Um, so it was my goal after that to treat him kindly and treat his wound, but also do it in a way that didn't cause him pain. And there was another nurse there that did show compassion for him. Um, his name was David. He made sure to order him lidocaine cream so that the next time they did it, that he would have pain relief. All right. So 
that is the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will see you in class. Thank you.